Hello, and welcome to this overview of Chapter 5 on the topic of probability and probability distributions. So the first thing to say is that probability is the likely outcome of something occurring in a business analysis. When we look at predictability, it also looks at the probability factors of a, a potential chance, or let's say in the world of gambling, the probability of winning blackjack. Well, it's the same kind of principles when it comes to business at times. Now, I'm not saying everything you do in business is a gamble, but you have some type of likelihood of something occurring based, basically on the numerical and mathematical values of the in, in data that you've got. A probability is a numerical value that measures the likelihood that an event occurs. It's usually between zero and one. Zero is an impossible event that never occurs, or one is a definite event that always occurs. If you think about it this way, zero between zero and one, and you look at decimal points, it's the percentage of possibility. One being 100% of the time, zero meaning 0% zero or never percent of the time, and usually end up with some type of percent that the percent of the time something's going to occur. An experiment is a process that leads to one of several possible outcomes. Actual outcome is not known with certainly before the experiment begins. So we don't have an exact answer before we even conduct the experiment. The experiment is taking data and business analytics and deriving to a conclusion based off an experiment. Diversity of outcomes is due to uncertainty. So if we have multiple sets of outcomes, of probable outcomes and probability. Well, this means that it's uncertain the exact answer or outcome that's going to be defined. This also can occur. So for example, sample space of an experiment, denoted as S, contains all possible outcomes of the experiment. So for example, letter grades in a course. Well, normally in a class, you can have A, B, C, D, and F. Well, passing a course or not equals S equals pass or fail. An event is any subset of outcomes of the experiment. A simple event, if it contains a single outcome, it may contain several outcomes. So for this, if to pass, normally you need a grade of A, B, C, or D in most college classes to equal pass. Fail is just an F. So with this, you have four chances of getting an A, B, C, or D, which is actually 80% likelihood a passing versus a 20% chance of failing because F is one of five grades, which equals 20%. This is one way of looking at probability. Now, there are also things called exhaustive events in probability. It's all possible outcomes of an experiment belonging to the events, it includes all outcomes in the sample space. So again, grades could definitely be something that is a determination of pass or fail. There's also mutually exclusive events. They do not share any common outcomes. The occurrence of one event precluding the occurrence of others. So for example, grades of A and B are not exhaustive events because they do not include all feasible grades in the sample space, but the events are mutually exclusive. So a grade of A and B are mutually exclusive because you will pass the class or not. They are exhaustive events though because they are separate in nature. An A and B are two different grades but are mutually exclusive in the experiment of basically finding out which grades will have you pass the class and they're both mutually exclusive. Pass and fail are exhaustive and mutually exclusive, meaning it's one or the other. Okay, so if we group up a set of variables, in this case, a grade of A, B, C, D, and, and D, A, B, C, and D all equal pass while the grade of F is one variable equals fail. We can define events based on one or more outcomes of the experiment, also combine events to form new events, like in a Venn diagram. The bottom right corner is an example of a Venn diagram with all, gray, all groups on the outside of A and everything in B, but everything that has commonality in between is the center. Sample space is S with a rectangle. Two circles represent events A and B. Now, do not think grades here. I'm thinking of one A group of data and one B group of data, so two different sets of data. All outcomes in A or B or both, the portion of the Venn diagram that is included in either A or B is the outside of the center combined circle. So at times in probability, when we have potential outcomes, what we're looking for is what is in between. Where's the commonality, but also where's the predictability that somewhere in the middle are, are sets of data that match each other from a probability perspective. 
the intersection of two events is denoted as A and this symbol like with upside down U and B. All outcomes in A and B is what we're looking for here in the middle. The portion of the Venn diagram that is included in both A and B is the overlap. And those are those common probabilities we're looking for. So let's say, for example, you're looking at customer segmentation. You have one set of attributes of customers in group A and one in group B. And there can be some differences between group A and B. Well, then there's some commonalities, perhaps demographic or regionality or age group or something that's in common that provides us a probability of something occurring based off those attributes. This is what we're looking for, is that overlap, to find a more targeted group of customers to market to in this particular example. Now we must define our properties of probability. The probability of an event A is a value between zero and one. That is zero with a probability of A less than one. Somewhere in there, an event A is between zero and one. The sum of probabilities of any list of mutually exclusive and exhaust exhaustive events equals one. There are three types of probabilities. One, subjective, calculated by drawing on personal and subjective judgment. So at times, we need to look at historical records or experience and intuition to come up with that subjective probability. Two, empirical, calculated as a relative frequency of occurrence. So if something happens more often than not in a trend analysis, or even one of those ranges or mean, medians, and modes, that probability outcome could also be part of this. Classical based on logical analysis. So for example, 37% of female open house attendees will purchase a membership. What is the probability that a randomly selected female will not purchase a membership? So we define A as the event that a randomly selected female will purchase a membership. What we're looking for here is that. So we have the probability of event A being 37%. We already know, based on the question, there's a 37% that they will purchase a membership. What is the opposite of that? A randomly selected female outside of that group of that 37% is that P, which is the probability value of the group A, which when you take it between one and zero, one minus the probability value of 0.37 or 0.63. Now, you, one could say it's very straightforward in this question, just take 100% minus 67, or excuse me, 100% minus 37%, and then you get 63%. But that not all probability calculations are this simple. This is just a way of looking at it from that perspective. You take the opposite spectrum of the other side of the uh, statement and subtract that from the number already given from one. The addition rule. So what we're doing here is trying to find a probability of the union of two events where there's event A and event B. The probability that A or B occurs or at least one of these events occurring. So for this, the probability P in the formulation there is the join between A and B, where you're actually breaking it out, where you have to take the probability of group A plus the probability of group B and then subtracting the union between, which is the difference between the union. Right. The union is what we said earlier is important, but if we want to take out the variables or the data values that are not in that union, this is how you do it. So the probability of A union B is double counted if in both PA and PB. What this means is you're taking the entire pi of A and the entire pi of B and separating the in between and looking at your leftover data values or outcomes. Here's an example. Anthony feels that he has a 75% chance of getting an A in statistics and a 55% chance of getting an A in managerial economics. He also believes he has a 40% chance of getting an A in both classes. So what is the probability he gets an A in at least one of these courses? And what is the probability he does not get an A in either of these courses? Well, in this example, this is how we look at it. Remember, the A event is that statistics class. So He's saying he has a 75% chance, a 0.75 chance of getting an A in statistics. So you take the p-value of probability, event A is his statistics class, in his statement he's going to get a 75% chance of getting an A. Then you take the second bullet point of let the probability of event A, which is statistics, correspond to probability of getting an A in managerial economics. So when you take A, now again, of an A, you have 55% chance. So the union here is the A, which is statistics, and AM, meaning managerial economics, 
Each of those values equal what he thinks is a 40% chance of getting an A for both. So if you look at the A dot to answer the first question, what is the chance of getting an A in both classes, or either class, excuse me, it's the P probability of A union and AM, imagine a Venn diagram, where they're both circled with each other, a statistics class for AS and then AM equaling managerial economics. That equals, breaking them out to be the additive rule, P of A statistics, AS plus P, AM, combining those together and then subtracting the union between the two, which is the percent of opportunity he believes between AS 75% and the 55%, 0.55 of AM. Add those together in the order of operations, 0.75 plus 0.55 minus 0.40 equals 90%. So it's a 90% opportunity that he'll get an A in either class. The probability that he does not receive an A in either of these two courses is complement of the union. That is the merge in between. Okay, so you have 90% on the outside and on the inside of the union is a 10% chance that he will not receive an A in either class. So remember we're using a Venn diagram model where one side is is AS, which is statistics, AM on the other circle on the right side, meaning managerial economics. You take the formula of subtracting the union between the two and get 90% or 0 0.90. And then you take the subtraction of that from a one minus 0 0.90 to get 0.1 or 10% chance he will not get an A, which kind of makes sense because he feels strong that there's a high percent in each class to get an A. So in summary, the final look of a mutually exclusive event for A and B would look like this. The probability of the intersection is zero. So imagine if there was no union. We need to have an ability to say the union does not exist at equal zero. There's no double counting. And set A or event A is separate from group B, there is no correlation. This could exist as well. This also is important if you're trying to compare two different events or sample sizes of audiences and, and business kind of segmentation of customers or two sets of outcomes in general. You can have a chance that the probability has no conjoined or union between the two, and that's okay. It's important to identify that though, so you can treat each set of events or samples separately from each other. So overall, this is the scope of probability, how to calculate it, and what it looks like in the overall manner of business analytics for potential outcomes based on probability. Thanks so much for your time.